All right, we'll be studying this morning in the third chapter of, of Colossians, the first first verse in the third chapter of Colossians. And uh, the title of the my Bible says it's the new life of Christ in Christ. So he says here in verse one of, of uh, chapter one of the third chapter, third verse, third chapter of Colossians, verse one. If you then be risen, and this risen, I, I make a little mark right. If, if you're dead. Uh, and that sounds kind of silly, don't it? If you're dead with Christ, now that's the thing. If we are, we have died to sin. We're no longer, we're no longer a servant of sin, because the Bible says, "Whatsoever you serve, that you're a servant of." And this morning we have, we are, we've then been risen with Christ, and He's talking about. As Christ was risen from the death, burial, and the resurrection, we've been risen again with Christ. And uh, it, it asks us this morning to seek those things which are <clears throat> above Amen. where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Now, this morning, when we've, we've said it a few times, and we've made mention of it, where the, uh, Christ sitteth. And one time they in, in our uh, studies and all we've, we've heard about the two uh, children uh, asking uh, the two followers of Christ to, if they could sit on his right and his left. But it don't say anything about that, but it says this, that Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Father. And he's there for one purpose, and that is to make intercessions for Amen. us. Even when we pray, we are to pray to Christ, and he takes the message to the Father, and gives it to him or tells him and he tells him this is my child amen i died for this child so this is why he says here where christ sitteth on the right hand of, of god he says here in verse two set your affections now this mm -hmm. word affections is love uh or it could be uh uh something else but it, it's talking about love and Set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. Now, there's things on this earth that we set our affections on. Mm -hmm. And not every time do we really want to do it, but we do it. And we want to, if we would, if you would, just for a minute, read, uh, turn over to Matthew's Gospel, just a minute. And we're going to read Matthew 16. In Matthew 16, if I can get there, I've got to uh, turn the Bible up. Just bear with me. I won't read it like it's supposed to be read. I think somebody's in the basement. <laughs> Sixteen and verse sixteen, I believe it is. Let me get turned to it. I don't know what's wrong this morning, but uh, I do too. But uh, let, let me look at nineteen. Hmm. People, this morning, it's, uh, let me let me look again. It's it sets your affections on things of this. What it says is set your affections on things of this world and not on things. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the world. I want to read it to you. I'm going to read it to you if it takes all day uh, because we need to hear it. Matthew 6. Okay, that's the reason I couldn't find it. 19. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> now, it says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, Amen. and where thieves breaks through and steals. Now, why is he saying this? Because the moth or the rust will devour iron, you know, and, and the and the moth will just destroy any kind of clothing or anything. But this is a lot of the time people's uh, desire is to have this and to have new 
vehicles, new clothing, and new things like this. And we, we just read here this morning, it says, set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. And so he said here, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven Amen. where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. Now, you, you, some of you that uh, may be uh, uh, thinking about this, well, now how do I lay up treasures in heaven? Well, it's through serving the Lord. Amen. And this, this morning, for you that are younger and have not studied the Bible as long as some of the rest of us have, listen, we need to, we need to use this Bible to study, to show ourselves approved, and we Amen. need to understand what God's Word says. And this is the way that we can serve Him, and we can honor Him, and we can lay up treasures in heaven. Because, listen... He loves us, and he, he wants to save those that he hasn't saved, and those that he has saved, he wants them to serve him, and he wants us to do the things that would be pleasing to him. And so by this, we lay up treasures in Amen. heaven, not thinking on worldly things as much as we do on spiritual things for that we can uh, even like being a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a wonderful way to lay up treasures in heaven because that's one of the things that helps other people and you encourage other people and so that's where your treasures are laid up and he says here they're there permanent now you put your money in the bank you put new clothing on it's going to wear out holes going to come in it right. you put your money in the bank and you might have a, a, a depression or you might have an accident and it's all gone right and listen he says where you lay this up in heaven there it is permanent and the Lord has got it there ready for you when you come when you get there and when you get there you'll get greater rewards because you had these treasures in heaven and so this morning this is what he's saying here when he says set your affection on things uh, on, uh, above and not on things of the earth now for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. And this morning when I read the first there, I said, uh, if you be risen or if you be dead. Well, that's the reason I said that, because here's what he, what he wants us to say. For ye are dead. Now, when you are dead, you're dead. And I, I, I went through this, I think, last Sunday or Sunday before last. When you're dead, you're dead, and you don't move, you don't drink, you don't eat, you don't do nothing. Now, he's saying here, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ. And so, in other words, what you have died to is the world of corruption, the world of affections and the things of this world. You've died to those, and you've died to Christ, to the love and, and, and all that he has shared and brought in our hearts. And so you're dead to this old worldly stuff, Amen. and you're alive or born again to Christ and to Amen. God. And so he says here, for you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ, <clears throat> who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. And Amen. so this has given us this assurance this morning of uh, an eternal salvation, not one that you can get for a while and that you can lose it uh, by doing something wrong. But listen, it don't... It don't give you the opportunity or the privilege of doing something wrong because you're saved but man is not perfect right and he will sin and he will do things that he shouldn't do and so he says here when christ who is our life shall appear ye shall then shall ye also appear with him in glory you're going Amen. to be there with him and uh, these things of the old world and all has passed away. And so this morning, people, we don't need we don't need to fall in love with the world. Amen. We just don't need to get to the point where that it's a necessity for yeah. us to lust after worldly things because we can do without them Amen. cheaper and a whole lot easier than we can have them and suffer later. Mm -hmm. And so you may have to suffer a little bit in this world. You may have to do without things in this world. But listen, you always know this, 
that when you hear when he says when our our our, our life shall appear then shall you also appear with him in glory and so that's a consolation this morning that you've got and so these worldly things these ungodly things that are going on in this world you don't need to have no uh, no no uh, uh part of it because Amen. it's a hindrance to you and if you're saved I'm not saying you're going to die and go to hell because you're doing these things, but listen, you don't need to fool with them because, listen, Amen. you're depriving yourself of awards here on earth and in heaven also. And so stay away from it. Leave it alone. Don't listen to this ungodly stuff that's going on uh, in other churches and other places like that. Don't Amen. listen to it because, listen, you, and you know this morning we have family that is going to other churches and this and, and some of this garbage that's being put out over the pulpit listen it's nothing but of the devil Amen. and it's a sinful act for a, for a, a family to let their children go hear it and uh, or, or to go take them to hear it and so this morning we need to think about these things that were that what we're doing while we're here on this earth because listen we may not think about it, but we're responsible. Amen. We're responsible for our family, and 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 you that know the difference between right and wrong, know for that you should have your family, and what they should hear. Amen. So this morning, take heed, because listen, the Lord knows what all is going on, and and I'm saying this this morning, it's it's a warning to all of us. If we have family, if we have grandchildren if we have great grandchildren and we help them get along in some other kind of a place and, and here's false stuff hey it's it's going to be shame on us when we stand before god mm -hmm. so here he said here uh in verse five notice this mortify or to kill therefore uh therefore your members which are upon the earth Fornication, mm -hmm. uncleanliness, in order us, uh, evil, uh, evil affect, uh, affections, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. I want to turn. I want you to listen to me just a minute as I try to read some here. I think it is in Matthew's gospel. <coughs> Matthew uh, uh, says there in Matthew eighteen eight. Oh, it is. Let me read. Let me find it. About taking and cutting the hand off, and, and uh, uh, if if it offends you, I'll get to it. Matthew eight eighteen, I think it is. Uh, uh, I think I'm right on this. I may not be right. Well, anyway, here's what it says. If I hand, if I hand or thy eye offends thee, cut it off. Now, he's not saying this morning that because you are, and, and, and you know, your hand reaches out there and steals something, that you're supposed to take a chopping axe and cut it off. He's not saying that. The, the writer's not, he, he, no, he, but he's using this as, as something that you, your body is, and it's, a sinful body. Amen. And listen, this morning, if you uh, uh, let this uh, eye continually watch something that's ungodly, that's filthy, and you have a desire, man, you just can't hardly wait to get to that TV and turn that on because you see something really lustful, that's a sin. Mm -hmm. And this is what he's talking about here in this, in this scripture here this morning. He says, uh, uh, here, mortify, therefore, your members. In other words, control them. Mm -hmm. And if, if, if you see something on TV or you're watching uh, uh, something out here, uh, uh, even people in their short shorts and their halters and all this stuff, and you see it, you need to turn your head Amen. from it. You need to close your eyes or, or do something. You you don't you don't need to watch that because Amen. listen, people, this body this body loves it, mm -hmm. and you can say what you want to about your body, but I know I'm built out of the same thing you are, right? And it loves it, mm -hmm. and it wants to see it, and it's it's oh oh it's ooh that looks good, but listen, people, 
it finds it finds a place here in this old flesh. Right. It finds a place down here in this old flesh, and it causes lust. Mm -hmm. And lust is a sin. Amen. And God will punish you if you are a saved person. That's one of the things that you don't need to do is lust. And he will punish you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, sometimes his punishment gets pretty strong. Right. Sometimes he whoops you with a long switch. But listen, that's why he gave Paul this word to write down. He's warning me and he's warning you and he's saying, hey, you just don't do it. Mm -hmm. So here, 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 he says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. And, he, and I've done read all of these unclean uh, things that, that are going on. And listen, Lord, help them. But these people, this time, this in this era, that they're, they're putting their approval upon every kind of ungodly Amen. sin from abortion, uh, homosexuals, all these other sexuals, listen, they're putting their approval on it. They said there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, man's going to sin and he's going to sin. Listen, there's sins in this Bible that the God speaks about that, listen, it's worse than us. Amen. And fornication is one of them. And, and this, this adultery and all, all this stuff. And, 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 and these men and with men and women with women. And it's, 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 a, it's just like a fire in a broom field. Mm -hmm. She's wide open. And, and you look at them, and, and the first thing you know, well, it's a man said, well, my husband. And the woman, well, my wife. And you know how ugly, how stinky it is. But it's going on. It's mm -hmm. happening. And listen, we're living in it. Right. And you be careful because what you rub against sometimes will stick with you. It's just like rubbing up a, a, against a honey tree or something like that. It'll stick on you. Mm -hmm. And you watch enough of it on television, and the first thing you know, you'll get to say, well, I don't guess it's too much wrong with that. Right. And listen, that's, that's the devil, but hey, he's an enticer. He's Amen. a sweet talker, and he'll put these things to you. So he said here, you, do, you, you don't do that. You kill that, that lust. Now in verse 6, for which sake, talking about all these things, for which sake, things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now evidently he's talking about children that are saved. And, if it, and I know that children that are saved do this because we are all we're all prone to lean that away. But the thing of it is, because we do it, we don't need to lust on it. We don't Amen. need to stay in it. But the Holy Spirit, if you're a saved person this morning, the Holy Spirit is dwelling within you. Amen. And He will speak to your soul, and He will warn you about these things. And if you shake your head like a bull and just go on about it, listen, you're going to feel something on the other end, and it, 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 it's going to hurt. And so this morning... Children of obedience, a children of disobedience, or children. Listen here, he says, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on, upon the children of disobedience, in the which you also walked sometimes when you lived in them. So evidently he's talking, not maybe not talking about, but anyway he says, in the which you also walked sometimes when ye lived in them. Right. But now these are, but now ye. Also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blaspheming, and filthy communication out of your mouth. So again, he's saying there is there is a reward coming for those that do these sins. There is a a, a time coming when they're going to feel the wrath of God. Amen. So lie, verse nine says, lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and so here here again lie not one to another and this is talking about the person that has put off the old deeds of the old man in other words he has he has went from uh, uh went from death unto to life and to death and, and he's saved but he says and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him 
So he is in, so he's, he's warning, he's warning these people that are, are church members. He's warning the, he's writing to the church and he's saying, these are things that's, that's, that he's appointed you. Don't do these things. Amen. Wherefore there, in verse 11, wherefore there is neither Greek nor Jew, <clears throat> circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all in all. Amen. And so he says in verse 12, therefore, put on therefore as the elect of God. Amen. Those that have been of saved, those that are God's people, he says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved vows of mercy, Amen. kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Now compare that to over here to this other, to fornication, uncleanness, and ordinance, all these things. And this is, this is the lifestyle of a saved person, that you put this on, that you practice this, mm -hmm. that you do these things, and remember, these things are pleasing to God when you do these things, and you don't do them just to be a heretic and, and make people think that you're something, but you do these things because you've been saved, Amen. And because you love the Lord with all your heart, and you, you, you want to do it because you love Him and because that He died on the cross of Calvary for you, you do these things. Now he says, uh, another thing, listen, in verse 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Mm -hmm. And people sometimes that just tears the flesh all to pieces. Mm -hmm. The first thing the flesh wants to do, I'll get that boy back. I'll get him back. Mm -hmm. Listen, that's the wrong way to do it. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible tells us if he slaps you on the one face, you turn the other side. If he mm -hmm. takes your coat, you give him a cloak also. And you let him do what he will. God will take care of him. And you say, well, uh, he had it for me. Well, maybe you ain't lived long enough. Mm -hmm. Maybe you haven't waited long enough. Maybe you are not as close to the Lord as you should be. I don't know. But the thing of it is, I know this, that the Bible says hey, that's what you're to do. And so he says here, uh, <clears throat> Uh, let, me, let me get more mad. And, and forbearing one another, uh, one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. And this this morning, this thing, these few little words here that, that Christ forgave you ought to encourage you. It Amen. ought to cheer you up. It ought to make you say, well, hey, I'll not do that because Christ did something for you that nobody else could do. Amen. When he went to the cross and he died on the cross of Calvary for you, there was nothing, there was nowhere in heaven, there was nowhere on the earth, there was nowhere that there could be a uh, uh, anything found that would do what Christ did for you. He was the only one. And so here, all, all the Lord is asking us to do this morning is, is to forgive and, 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 and if we can and we should be able to is to pray for that person because listen if, if, if people mistreat you you know there's something wrong with them mm -hmm. and listen if, if, if they're saved God's going to take care of them Amen. if they're lost you pray for them maybe the Holy Spirit will come and deal with them and, re and rebuke them of that thing and make them get in line and for for your prayers, Amen. they might be saved. And so this is this is a this is a, a wonderful thing right here. Now he says in verse 14, and above all these things, put on charity, Amen. or love, which is the bond of perfectionness. Let and let the peace of God rule in your heart, Amen. to the which also ye are called in one body. And be thankful. And so he says, love one another. He says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. And that is, when you, when the word of God dwells in you richly, richly means, according to money, that you've got a lot of it. And so if it's, if it's abiding in you richly, and the only way that it can abide in you richly is 
that you forbear one another and forgive one another and that you study to show yourself a code and the Holy Spirit is there and he encourages you and you have this this richly flowing out of your mouth amen and you're speaking to you're speaking to others and that's what he's talking about here and and let the peace of God rule in your heart to the which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful amen let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever you do, do, in, do, do ye in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And listen, this morning, you know, when even when you, uh, as we were speaking last Sunday about the alms, mm -hmm. if you if you give alms, if you give a person a, 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 a meal, if you give them a shirt, if you give them in, do it in the name of the Lord. Amen. And if you if you if you possibly can, tell that person, I'm giving it to you mm -hmm. in the name of the Lord, and then you can get the reward for it because you give, you've given it to the Lord and he'll reward you back, see? And so the next thing you know, you'll have two shirts in your closet. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm using that as an example, people. Listen, it, there's, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Anytime, anywhere. Amen. Because listen, I want you to know this morning, I don't want to be in a condition where that nobody has to give me anything. I could be in a, a wheelchair and they could have to be pushing me around. But on the other hand, I could be pushing somebody mm -hmm. and I could be helped. So I, 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 it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. So not, let, that be, let that be something that'll, that'll, that'll be a memory to you. And he says, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. <clears throat> and so this is... This is what we, how we wanted to end our, our, our lesson this morning. So we'll, we'll stop. Time's about going anyway. So we, we hope that some of this has been uh, a blessing to you and Amen. something that you can carry away with you. And if you put it in your pocket, be sure and every once in a while run your hand down your pocket and see what you got. Mm -hmm. And if you got it, pull it out and look at it. I mean, it, it might it might bring something back to your remembrance, and uh, uh, your the Lord will the Lord will help you with it. The Lord will let you use it if you sincerely want to use it. He'll let you. He'll give you an opportunity because <clears throat> I know, I know, I pray, I pray, mm -hmm. Lord, help me, help me to be a help someone. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of days before I before I go back to bed, I think, Lord, did I mess up? Did I not do what you said? Because, you know, I can always be a witness. I can always tell someone about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you'll have an opportunity to do those things. So anyway, I hope this will give you a, an encouragement this morning because we all need an encouragement. Amen. This world is uh, not no encouraging place. It's, like I said, it's full of, uh, full of sin. And uh, you that we that know sin know how ugly and how stinky and Amen. how awful it is and what the end results of it is. So uh, you all pray for one another and pray for me and try to uh, get a lesson together. You know the devil the devil is uh, he's fault, he's fault, he's fault, mm -hmm. he's fault. And I, I got up this morning and uh, uh, tried to study a little bit and I, I told I and I said, Yeah I know what it is. I said, We're gonna observe the Lord's Supper today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's right there, he's right there to, to uh, push me down a little bit and get me out of whack and get me all upset and all this, you know. But anyway, the Lord help me overcome it. Amen. And, uh, so we, uh, we enjoyed the lesson. Thank you all so much.